excited to be here to talk with uh, Dad Williams, who is the Vice President of Fulfillment and Service Delivery at Radium. We're going to really just have a chat about the experience that Deb and her team had with implementing covariance robotic footballs uh, in a, one of their facilities, one of their operations. So we'll go ahead and get started. I know we've still got people coming in, but we're going to try to stay on track of time. So the first thing I want to start with is just level setting for the room. A couple things that I've been hearing as I've been out in the field talking with customers and visiting sites and listening to operations leaders on what the challenges are that we're facing right now in supply chain. A couple of years ago, we would all hear labor, labor shortage, labor shortage. That was the issue. Um, however, what I noticed that is a little bit different twist on it this year is people are saying, I can get the labor, I can get them in the door, but they don't stay. And so the real issue this year is retention. It cost us so much to get them in, and then the, the statistics are 48% of warehouse workers turn over. And that much turnover creates a lot of instability to your supply chain. You make a lot of investments for automation and for operations and solutions, and then those assets sit idle when people don't show up. So what we're going to talk about today is how Radial approached that challenge and really was a, they were a thought leader and on the front end of investing in intelligent automation with robotics to help alleviate some of those constraints and problems for business. So I'm excited to have Deb. We'll, we'll get right in and, and start talking through it. Before we get started, I'll give you a little bit of an overview um, of the solutions that we, we installed and a little bit about covariant to help with some context for a later discussion. When we think about automating in the warehouse, um, most of us have been in and we've seen lots of things moving around. The automation of what we would say the feet of just moving boxes from here to there, that's pretty much been tackled. There, there are a lot of great options out there and there are a lot of different robotic solutions that can do that, AMRs, AGVs, etc. Where the real challenge and opportunity comes in is finding a way to automate the things that you would do with your hands. And that's where a robotic system that has a really powerful AI backbone and platform is truly critical. The reason this has taken a little bit of time for the industry to solve and figure out is because the technology wasn't quite there yet in order to handle all the various SKUs that you have, the variation that happens with packaging and sizing, um, and then just the products themselves. That really requires an intelligent vision system, an AI system to be able to help identify and tell the robot how to handle that specific item. When you think about what tasks in your facilities require the hands, this is just a great visual to give you some areas to think about. All of these different use cases that you see, all the way from truck unloading uh, to goods to person picking, palletizing, depal, all of those use cases are things that you can use AI-powered robots to help you with today. When we think about what Covariant has to offer, one of the differentiators for us is that we actually have these systems deployed and deployed at scale across multiple use cases. We use a universal AI that allows us to power our solutions looking across multiple use cases instead of just one. And that actually helps the AI be much more intelligent because it's using a lot more data to process. When we talk about the complexity in your buildings, we really look at both the complexity but the need for throughput and accuracy. And those things really rely heavily on the AI solution that you choose. These are just a few of the different examples um, of deployments that are out in the field today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we want to get to Deb and have her really share her experience. So if you want to hear any more about Covariant and what we're offering, um, we'd invite you to come. We're going to have a happy hour afterwards and we'll invite you to come by the booth to hear more detail about that. All right. So I think um, the first thing that I wanted to spend a little time about, now that we kind of walked over some of the solutions from Covariant, is really to have you kind of walk us through a little more background on radial um, and your business and what you guys offer. Absolutely. Um, great to be here. And for those of you in the room that don't know uh, a little bit about radial, um, I'll give you uh, just a brief overview. 
We are an e-commerce 3PL provider with a full suite of services through the whole journey, the end-to-end -end supply chain journey. So we, uh, we have order management, uh, payment solutions, uh, customer service, also have fulfillment, which is my specialty, uh, and transportation. In the fulfillment centers, that we've got 27 of them uh, in North America, nine in Europe, and in those fulfillment centers, we, we have a very flexible operation. Some are dedicated facilities for our clients, whether we've managed the facility and lease, or they manage the facility and lease. We also have a suite of facilities that are multi-client. So very flexible. What does the small and medium sized customer get out of a multi-client? Well, they have the ability to be able to leverage our infrastructure and leverage our automation. Uh, so that's really an exciting opportunity for us to be able to provide that benefit to all of our customers. Um, and, and a full suite of services, as I mentioned. I did want to talk a little bit about this, how we think about automation in general, and, and we've got a great partnership with Covariant, which we'll talk about a little bit more. But we use a suite of different types of automation. Um, as Heather mentioned, uh, you know, she showed some wonderful videos. We've got all of them, uh, as far as goods to person, AMRs, CTVs, etc. Uh, but this one is a really unique relationship, and, 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 it, and as you guys are out there, you may be considering, hey, I'm, I'm at a point, an inflection point, I want to do this, <clears throat> I'm really concerned about the implementation, what will that be like? Uh, and I can tell you, I've heard that from customers who actually have gone full bore, maybe they have their own fulfillment centers, and they've invested in automation that has not gone well, and we've actually come in to help them out. So lots of case studies on that. Um, this is one that actually has gone well. So I'm excited to share some of the details with you on that. Yeah, I th maybe that would be great um, if you could give the audience just a bit of an overview on the exact solution um, that we implemented that we're going to be discussing in a little more detail so they can have a, a good general understanding of that. Perfect, perfect. Um, so we have a, a facility outside of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it's about 500,000 square feet, and we've implemented Covariant there. Uh, we've got, it's a health and beauty client that um, is currently in that facility. It's, it is a dedicated facility that we're servicing for them. And we, we put some challenges in front of Covariant because we said, this has got to be seamless. This is an existing facility that's running for a very important customer of ours, and it, it, it has to be seamless. So that, that um, was certainly an exciting challenge for, uh, for, the, for the team that we put out in front of them. And, and as, we, as we talk about the AI, you know, that customer has thousands of SKUs and they're always releasing more SKUs um, and, and new SKUs. And, and the AI had to be able to work with the various different components and be flexible with our customer as they are actually changing their product portfolio. So that that's a, you know that's a little bit about the TP2 solution. Yeah, yeah. And what we implemented were um, twelve U-shaped uh, robotic pit walls. You can see on the screen now. This is some of the the installation of that solution. And one of the challenges was we needed to work within the existing footprint. So we we were doing this just before peak. Um, as we all have been through those types of implementations. And it was really critical that we have it up and running prior to peak, that we not disrupt the operations as much as possible and fit within that existing footprint. So we put these 12 automated put walls in, um, and one of the key stats that I'd give you around this that I find really interesting is 100% of the SKUs in this building were able to be picked by the robot. So that really enabled uh, the customer and radial to get the most out of that solution because 100% of their volume could go through the robots. You know, I think, you know, I, I've got a question for you, Heather. It's just, as, as you think about the, the, the partnership, um, and, you know, certainly from, from, from my perspective that you know, system performance and success is so critical, and, and you've been so in tune with us, but how do you define you know, the customer success, what does that look like? Yeah, I, I think I would say for us, it's really about long-term 
partnership and long-term customer relationship. We're really focused on that. Um, I, I would tell you that's how I got to Covary it myself, um, was having been a partner and on the other side of it, and just seeing the, the deep relationships and the culture within our organization all focused on performance and success. One of the things I love, um, having been in this industry for a really long time in technology, disruptive technology, there are a lot of promises out there that then when you get it installed, it just doesn't live up to the promise. And we've all been through those kinds of implementations. What I love about our team and our partnership with you guys is we really stand behind those KPIs and our promise to our customer, so much so that it's just part of our commercial arrangement. We will guarantee those rates and we will guarantee the success. And I think that's what, to me, that's customer success when we're both in it together and we're not going to leave the site, we're not going to leave you until we have hit that success rate. When you're looking at something that's new and emerging like this, that's really critical to find a partner. All right, so maybe we can take your latest deployment story um, from the TP2 facility and bring to light some of the things I'm describing here. Maybe if you could share with um, the group just some of the things on the install and have the timeline that we have. Oh, absolutely. Some of that kind of stuff that yeah. made helpful. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, all the things you talked about in defining success were so key for us. Guys, we put a lot of guardrails in, in Covariant and I think it's just worth reiterating again and again that we said, hey, you know, you got to integrate with our WS and WMS systems. Uh, you got to stay in our footprint. Oh, and we're not changing anything. We're not going to move around, you know, the conveyance systems. And, you know, and, and you've got to work with all our employees and, and operations to make sure we're hitting the success and we're hitting all of our SLAs and our milestones. So, wow, we put a lot of constraints but within a, such a tight timeline, and it's truly been such a great journey for me to see within six months, guys, you know, from like the first bot out there to having the 12 now fully functional, I think truly impressive. Uh, so, and, and it is all due to the, the, the partnership that we have. And, and, and I would share that um, just the, the, we don't use the word partnership loosely, I don't. And I certainly mean that, you know, that extent of, working with the operations to understand client expectations, uh, working with our associates on the floor so that they're comfortable using the equipment and training them on the equipment. Um, that was really the success of that partnership and the success of the implementation. So certainly exciting. You can see them all running here, guys. This is, this is not that, you know, this has been this way for for, for a bit, so certainly exciting, um, and you know, and, and appreciate the, the, the that partnership to get to the success. Yeah, I think um, maybe you could speak a little bit about what we saw um, during peak. I think we had all twelve replaced, so these were manual stations, as she said before. We came in, I think they were live right before peak, um, and we had all twelve of them running. They ran through. The entire peak season. I mean, Absolutely. all 12 of them were fully functional and, and live all the time. Absolutely, yeah. They were instrumental. The first one of it has done, I think, over a million peak units. And I mean, it's just been phenomenal. And we really relied on that for our peak. Again, coming back to labor. You know, our peak period for this particular customer is actually pretty long. So it's an extended peak. It starts at the end of October, runs through January. So having Having the robotics up and running for us was was essential. Um, you know, so tru truly a success. Yeah. So um, as some of the folks here may be thinking about uh, doing this as well themselves in some of their buildings, um, what is some advice that you might give them when they're starting this journey? Well, I would say um, start. <laughs> the time is now. Uh, don't wait. Um, invest in that. Um, invest in automation, um, invest in the right partner who will work with you um, in the integration to better understand your customer needs, you know, to really understand guardrails that you may have out there, um, like I described, right, multiple times. We gave them lots of guardrails. And, you know, and start that learning process. And for, for us at Radial now, 
we have developed this with covariant um, and this integration and we're looking to replicate we're exploring this throughout so don't don't wait i mean it, it's not too late i mean it's not too late to start um and you can see we it's been pretty fit, fast for us so you know, I, I would say go <laughs> do it so, yeah, I, I think um, for those of you that might be exploring this or thinking about um, looking at something in the next, you know, prior to this week or next year, as you start evaluating these solutions, one of the things that we find, I get this question all the time, is AI is such a buzzword. You'll hear it everywhere. Um, you can't you can't go online and not see something about chat GPT or, you know, some use of AI in every way. Um, it's really important to understand what the difference is in the solutions that are on the market because it makes a huge difference. Um, for example, our proprietary vision system that we have, the interconnectivity between what the vision system is doing and the core AI model. If you have an off-the-shelf vision system that can't get to a really granular level to see very small items or unique differences in the scene that it's picking from, your AI system is not going to be able to make a really good decision about where to grab that item. And so if you have a really good model that it's a foundation that's built on, and you have something that has fleet learning, which means across any install anywhere in the world, all of the picks that have happened on that platform in Covariant are going back to the same AI model. So as you know, AI gets better with larger data sets. So the fact that we have these millions and millions of items that the system has seen and been able to pick, our system's gonna know how to pick that up. So as you're talking to providers out there, one of the things you really wanna hone in on is trying to understand how the AI is working and what are some of the key differences. If you need help with that, we've got a great kind of cheat sheet of some questions to ask. Happy to share those. Um, as we said earlier, we're going to be doing answering questions over at our booth, and uh, we'll be happy to, to share some of that information with you or connect with you as well. I guess in, in closing, Deb, is there any um, final suggestions or, or, or thoughts you'd like to share with the group? I, I think we've uh, covered most of them, and certainly I'm excited if uh, folks have some more deeper questions that uh, please come by the booth. Um, I'm actually um, a site director from the, this particular facility. Uh, he's actually here. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, look, we're the ops people. I'm not a salesperson, but I, I, I'm an ops person. But, uh, so we'll be glad to share with you kind of our operational experience, um, you know, and, and really the just well, how we've looked at automation, certainly from our customers, think, you know, that flexibility, that agility that we need to service them better. You know, find that right partner that will work with you to understand the to understand your needs, your customers' needs, uh, and work with your people, with your ops team at the ground floor, with the associates to make it seamless. I think that's really you know, wraps it up for me. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. This was great. It was, oh, it was thanks. Fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be at, at the Covariant booth, which is in N60 on 51. So it's as far from here as you could get. Get your steps <laughs> just, in today. Just follow the pink shoes. All, all of our folks will have them on. Uh, so follow those out. And Chris will be with us as well. Um, you guys, I, if you saw the current issue of Modern Materials Handling, Chris is is on the cover of that this month, so come by, get an autograph, say hello, and he can share his experience with you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.